Good morning and welcome to Uncle LD's High Bias. Our special guest this morning is Miss Diamanda Galas. Yeah. How are you this morning, Diamanda? Fine, honey. It's fucking freezing. Yes. <laughs> but you're warmer now in our little cubby hall at The Voice. Yes. So tell us all about your lovely St. Valentine's Day massacre that you're planning to thrill and chill the children. Well, you know, it's a bit like Medea, you know, it's, it's, it's that sort of thing. These love songs like You're My Thrill, for example, which I do, like said the spider to the fly, um, lovingly, they're composed of every part of what is a love affair, you know. All <laughs> the, the good parts, the bad parts, and everything? All the ugly <laughs> parts, the breaking up, the screaming and the threats, and the coming back <laughs> together again, and, and the tedious bits, and so forth. I take a song, and it's like a play, you know. As a matter of fact, a lot of the composers of these songs, and the word composer is operant here because these are highly right. trained guys. Because they're in and they're commercial songs. Well, they became commercial songs, right. but they're, these are a lot of these guys are Eastern European composers who, met, uh, who moved to Paris, who moved to Hollywood, who moved to New York, and got jobs, you know, writing classical music, but also writing soundtracks, writing songs, knew very sophisticated progressions from studying Liszt with Bartok, with uh, the music of Chopin, whatever. New the, the classic, then, high romantic stuff. Yep, they're beautiful songs. They're very, very, Name very names. beautiful songs. Name composers. Joseph names. Cosma, Joseph Cosma, who wrote Autumn Leaves, who wrote Amour Perdu that Julia Greco sings at. Autumn night. Leaves, which we have just heard. Yes, and for example, this guy wrote a series of art songs. He wrote classical music. He studied with Bartok, who's Hungarian. He's, he's very. Uh, they know sorrow. I mean, these are people, yeah, these are people that know. Uh, for example, the people that wrote Gloomy Sunday, like the people that work with Jacques Perel, that worked with a lot of the artists that worked with Piaf. These were classical composers. You know, the people that did a lot of the songs for Marlene Dietrich, these are classical composers, you know. And, of course, in this country, nobody knows about that because, <laughs> you know, the tradition of jazz singing. And they never discuss... You say that with such disdain. Say it again with more disdain. Well, jazz singing. And in that, that they discuss the, quote, interpreter. They do not discuss, they do not discuss the composer of the music. And so, whereas we get to hear about Billy Holly's interpretation or Peggy Lee's interpretation and blah, 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 we never hear about the guy that wrote the song, the actual song. This person is just left behind, and then we get to hear about either one of two things, the white school of interpretation, the black school of interpretation. And this is a bunch of garbage. It's a bunch of garbage, it's, right. It's I all it. about the American political agenda, which is tremendously boring to Europeans. <laughs> And it's tremendously boring. And <laughs> the fact is, for example, I mean, Miles Davis even wrote about this in that crappy book of Quincy Troop, that half-assed scholar, half-assed lying scholar, not scholar. He, he said nobody even knows about the history of the songwriting. And, you know, of course, Gil Evans, who he worked with and upon whom he depended quite a lot. Uh, but, you know, they don't even know. They don't even know the history of the music. And he himself is guilty of having slipped into that kind of corny political agenda, too. That's so easy to do when you're a public figure, isn't it? Well, he would do that, you know, in his more coconated moments. But <laughs> then when he, when he was a sober mind, which was very rare, he would try to discuss the fact that all these, these musics, for example, American jazz, is composed mm -hmm. of Byzantine scales that were, for example, communicated to West Africa through their enslavement by Islam and the fact that the religious music was Islamic religious music, which then brings us back again to Byzantium. So you have a combination of so many musical cultures in one interpretation of one song like Autumn Leaves. And it's not what this country has reduced it to, which is prosaic and imbecilic. It is a very, very complicated musical background, a very refined musical background. In point of fact, an art form. I would say that obviously the interpretation is important, but I think the first thing that should be discussed when a person discusses a song is the chord changes, because it is, after all, music rather than spoken word. <laughs> <laughs> and then the words. I don't care whether the words were written first and then the chords. Ultimately, we're still talking about oh. music. If we talk about You're My Thrill, we're talking about very sophisticated chord progression, after which we're talking about these words, you're my thrill, you do something to me, 
And the woman is like, or the person who's in love, is talking about the object of her love first as an object of admiration, affection, then obsession and infatuation, then morbid surgical fixation. Then you have a praying mantis (laughs) who is inextricably afflicted by the desire to suck out the brain matter. That's so romantic when you say it. Yes, of the loved one's cranium. And unfortunately, that happens so often in my case. And this is what interests me about that song. And the chord progressions demand for you to look at the song as a dramatic vehicle. Not, you're my thrill, you do something for me, da 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 yeah, you're my thrill, da 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 That's a campy, my God. I mean, any fourth-rate camp singer would do it better than any jazz singer does it at the moment, except for me. The thing is, is that's because I look at the song, I understand the words, which is always a fascinating idea, but I also understand the story that the chord changes tell. I mean, you've got a lot of diminished chords in there. Diminished chords are always good ground for a story, because they themselves have a story. The constitution of a diminished chord in and of itself is already the groundwork for an interesting story. So you have a series, series of chords that keep moving and moving and moving and moving and this bridge that keeps moving and moving. And that's how you can go from saying, you have the most beautiful eyes, to suddenly feeling your teeth motivated towards sucking out that brain material. And you have to stop yourself Often in my case, I don't. And then this horrible, horrible thing ensues, which is a very, very big, ugly, and damaging war to both persons. Then the inevitable breakup. Then maybe you come back together. Very rare. I have the occasion to have a relationship like that. And we actually have come back together several times after... Disaster looms. After <laughs> horrific <laughs> threats. My threats have been things like... I'll tell you what you want to do this morning when you wake up and you look in your mirror. I want you to take your two fingers and put them straight into your eyes. Then... That's so loving. You will see yourself as I see you, dead man. And that, I mean, for me, that's... That must work for some people. Well, it does (laughs) seem to work for the two of us. I mean, I don't know if it's good or bad. I'm so happy you applauded. Because it seems as if Freud has ruined it for all those of us who were educated as Greeks. Um, (laughs) And the difference being high drama, obviously. Well, I don't know if it's drama. I think it's, it's an imperative. It's a biological imperative for those of us who, for example, are not breeding and doing that sort of thing. We have to live a far more... Um, we live this very, very bizarre life that, that doesn't have to do with the rules and regulations of, of a society that commands people to live pedestrian existences. And so you, you can afford to be more luxurious... And if you want to put it that way, well, some people would say is a perfectly good word for it. some people would say self indulgent. But <sighs> this is, of course, why I don't understand why there are gay marriages, except for things like housing situations and insurance policies, right. because why people would want to become breeders and do all that sort of thing. You know, you have chattel, and then you have the person with whom you're in love. Right, right, right.